JK rubbed his temples. He was truly confused about his relationship with Yin. Until now, he hadn't found the right way to talk to Yin without hurting her feelings. In truth, JK wanted this misunderstanding to end quickly. If not, Yin might start to believe that he was really her boyfriend. She had even begun to kiss and hug him. On the other hand, JK wanted to confront her, but there was still an uncomfortable feeling and a sense of pity for Yin. Ugh, he was really frustrated. JK got up from his seat and headed straight to the bathroom. He prepared himself to go to his office. Two years had passed since Yin's parents' death, and the fact was that Yin still lived with JK in his apartment. Both of them had graduated from college. JK now worked at the prosecutor's office. Meanwhile, Yin was still unemployed, or more precisely, she hadn't intended to work yet. She had quite a sum saved from her parents' inheritance and also from their life insurance policies. In the kitchen, Yin was seen preparing sandwiches, for herself and of course, for JK. Shortly after, JK appeared, well dressed in his suit, standing near the dining table, ready for breakfast. The sandwiches and milk were already placed on the table. JK sat down, and Yin followed suit, sitting across from him. They began to have breakfast together. Eventually, when JK was about to leave, once again, Yin kissed his cheek. Be careful on the road. You too. Take care at home. JK started to walk out of his apartment, heading straight to the basement to get into his car. While in the car, he leaned back in the driver's seat, wondering why he couldn't just reject Yin's kiss. He could have easily avoided it or told her directly. JK let out a soft sigh, and finally, he started his car. Meanwhile, back in JK's apartment, Yin began tidying up, cleaning the entire house, including the kitchen, living room, bathroom, and bedrooms. Yin actually had her own bedroom, but she often slept with JK, by sleep, meaning just sleeping without doing anything else. It all started when Yin would cry and have nightmares almost every night, almost every midnight. JK would find Yin crying alone in her room. So, to comfort Yin, JK invited her to sleep in the master bedroom which was, in fact, JK's bedroom. Yin's room had a small, single bed, while JK's bedroom had a king-sized one. Since then, Yin felt more relaxed and free to sleep with JK. When Yin cried, she often slept in JK's comforting embrace. This was the reason Yin now felt comfortable enough to hug JK as well. In reality, Yin herself was confused about their relationship. JK had always treated her very well, taking care of her and protecting her. He had never ignored her, raised his voice, let alone gotten angry or harsh with her. So, if someone were to say this was just a friendship, to be honest, Yin couldn't believe that anymore. In her view, the way JK treated her went beyond mere friendship. Moreover, Yin no longer wanted to dwell on complicated matters that would only lead to stress. She had already experienced enough stress. Now, she just wanted to enjoy her time being with JK. JK is taking care of her here because he wants Yin to be able to endure and stay strong, so she will fulfill JK's desire. She doesn't want JK to worry, so she will grow and become a strong girl. JK and Jaimin are seen casually chatting. They both work as prosecutors in the same office, so it's no surprise that they look very close. They have been friends since their college days. So, what about Yin? Have you talked to her? Not yet. Every time I try to say it, my heart feels too guilty. If you're afraid of hurting her, why not just consider Yin your real girlfriend now? Try opening up to her. You think I haven't tried that? She's been living with me for two years, and for the past year, I've been trying to love her. But I still feel like she's not really my girlfriend, just a friend. Jaimin, hearing JK's explanation, is left without words. So, what do you want then? Do you plan to pursue a relationship with a woman you truly love? With whom, you say? How can I pursue a relationship with another woman when, even now, I'm struggling to handle my issues with Yin? If I were to date someone else and she found out that Yin has been living with me for two years, would that make any sense? Plus, if she knew that Yin often spends the night with me, cuddles, kisses me, do you think any woman would accept me like that? Hey, but why has this level of intimacy developed between you two? She used to have frequent nightmares, almost every night, and she'd cry alone. I tried to comfort her. So, I brought her to my room. This happened quite often. But after that, she got used to it, and now she prefers sleeping with me more often than sleeping alone. Hey, do you not have any sexual desire for her at all? Sleeping together every night in the same bed? That's what's strange. There's none at all. I have no desire for her. That's why I said she's nothing more than just a friend to me. Well, your situation is quite complicated. The solution is simple. Just tell her. If you've been holding back because you didn't want to hurt her, you can choose your words carefully and hope she'll understand. 
Ah, uh, it feels like I'm about to break things off, even though we've never officially dated. JK entered his apartment, but Yin didn't greet him as usual. It seemed like she was in her room. JK walked into his room without closing the door all the way. He immediately took off his suit and loosened his tie. Suddenly, his phone rang, and he saw V's name on the caller ID. JK quickly answered. Hey, it's been a while. How have you been? Good. How about you? How have you been? I'm good too. What's up? I assume you called me for a reason, right? Not really. I just wanted to tell you some good news. Jisoo and I are officially a couple now. Congratulations. After all this time, you two are finally together. What about you? Do you have a girlfriend now? Girlfriend? From where? Yin is still living with me. What? That means it's been how long? Two years? Yeah. Something like that. Hey, but that's not bad. Why don't you just date her? She does consider me her boyfriend, but I still can't. To me, she's still just a friend like before. Are you sure about that? I've been trying to love her for a year now, but my feelings just won't cooperate. Well, if that's the case, why don't you talk to her, so she won't get the wrong idea? I've tried talking to her several times, but I just can't bring myself to do it. You're quite complicated, my friend. Anyway, how about we meet up sometime? It's been a while since the three of us, you, me, and Jaimin, hung out together. I'm fine with it. Feel free to schedule the time. Okay then. The call ended, and JK turned around, only to be surprised to find Yun standing right behind him, quite close, and with a slightly blush face. JK, if that's how you've been feeling all along, why didn't you just talk to me directly? Yin, forgive me. No, I should be the one apologizing. I've made your situation so complicated. You've been so good to me, and I seemed oblivious to it. JK immediately approached Yin. It's not like that. Please don't feel that way. I just... I understand. It's my fault, really. Besides, we were never officially dating. I should have been able to read the situation, but instead, I got lost in my own feelings. Forgive me, JK. It's not your fault, Yin. I'm the one who finds it difficult to express what I truly feel to you. If only I had. I'm the one at fault, JK. I wasn't aware of your situation. Yin. We can still be friends, right? Of course, JK. After all, you've been my best friend all this time. You're the best among them all. JK just smiled in relief, seeing Yin doing well now. Well, I'm going to my room now. JK smiled and nodded, and Yin promptly left his room, heading to her own. Yin closed her bedroom door, locking it from the inside. She leaned against the door. Finally, after all this time, her tears came. This time, she was making a conscious effort to control her voice, to ensure JK didn't hear her. Meanwhile, in JK's room he looked visibly relieved. The emotional weight and burden he had been carrying were now lifted. His head felt lighter, and he was grateful that Yin could understand and accept it with an open heart. JK continued to smile. After a while, he decided it was time for a shower. In her room, Yin kept wiping her never-ending tears. She gazed at the tattoo on her wrist, right over her pulse, a small tattoo that read JK. She took a deep breath. Finally, Yin pulled her large suitcase out of the closet and began packing her things, organizing her belongings. I can't stay here anymore. This is so embarrassing. How can I face him tomorrow? Oh, I'm really clueless. Even though he's been so good to me, look at how awkward our relationship has become. Yin, you're truly foolish. JK had finished his shower and quickly changed into casual clothes. His stomach growled. He was hungry and eager to have dinner. He knew Yin was probably waiting for him. Finally, JK left the room. He noticed that the food was prepared on the table, but not yet served on the plates. He wondered why Yin hadn't come out of her room. Was she not hungry? JK decided to go to Yin's room without knocking. He grabbed the door handle to open it, but it was locked. For two years, Yin had been living with him, and she had never locked the door from the inside. This allowed JK to check on her well-being at any time. It was actually JK who had discouraged her from locking the door, fearing that she might be secretly attempting something risky. JK had never locked his bedroom door, either, with the intention of allowing Yin to come to him in case of an emergency or when she needed help unexpectedly. JK gently knocked on Yin's bedroom door. Yin, have you eaten? I had dinner earlier. You go ahead and eat. I was changing. That's why I locked the door. All right, if that's the case. Finally, JK stepped away from Yin's room and went straight to the dining table. He ended up having dinner by himself this time. After dinner, JK returned to his room. He entered the bathroom to brush his teeth and get ready for bed. The clock showed it was already midnight. JK wanted to sleep, and he knew that starting from tonight, Yin wouldn't be sleeping with him in his bedroom anymore. Finally, 
he closed his eyes and tried to sleep. Half an hour had passed, but JK still couldn't fall asleep. He was getting increasingly concerned about Yun's condition. One hour had passed, and he was still awake. JK began to worry about Yin. He decided to leave his room and go to Yin's. He tried the door handle, but once again, it was locked. This time, what could be the reason? There must be something wrong. Yin, open the door now. Yin. JK continued to knock on the door, waiting for Yin's response. Finally, the door to Yin's room cracked open, and Yin peeked out from behind it. What's up, JK? Why did you lock the door? Well, I... Before Yin could finish her sentence, JK pushed the door open and walked right in. JK was surprised to see Yin's clothes, partially packed in a suitcase, while the rest were neatly laid out on the bed. Where are you going, Yin? I've been thinking, maybe it's better if I just go back to my old apartment, JK. JK had a feeling it would come to this, but he didn't expect Yin to plan to return to her old apartment so soon. When are you planning to move back to your apartment? I'll leave tomorrow morning. All right then. I can drop you off in the morning. No need. I can take a taxi. It's fine. And I have to go to work anyway. All right then. I just have a few more things to pack. Need any help? No. I'm almost done. All right then. I'll go back to my room. Yin just smiled and nodded. Finally. JK left Yin's room and returned to his own. He laid back down, realizing that from tomorrow onward, Yin wouldn't be in this apartment anymore. JK gazed at the ceiling of his room, knowing that starting tomorrow, he'd go back to his usual life. Before Yin had come here, his thoughts wandered far. The next morning, JK and Yin had their last breakfast together. They sat across from each other without any intention of starting a conversation. Both of them were lost in their thoughts. Silently, JK couldn't help but steal a glance at Yin, who was peacefully eating her toast. His eyes inadvertently focused on her hand holding the bread, where he saw the tattoo with his name. Once again, he felt guilty towards Yin, but he couldn't change his feelings. JK tried to lighten the mood between them. Yin, even after this, make sure to come here often. My door will always be open for you. Of course, and you should come to my place often too. They exchanged smiles, and then both looked down, realizing that this was their last breakfast together. Starting from that night, they would lead separate lives. After breakfast, JK helped Yin load her two suitcases into the trunk of his car. JK started the engine and drove to take Yin back to her old apartment. It wasn't too far, only about a 30-minute drive. Unbeknownst to them, they arrived at Yin's old apartment building. JK helped her unload her two suitcases from the car, and the building's security guard warmly welcomed Yin, who hadn't been around for two years. You can leave me here. They'll help me from this point. JK nodded and gave her a small smile, feeling a mixture of emotions as he prepared to say his goodbyes to the office. As JK continued driving, he couldn't help but glance at the rearview mirror as Yin disappeared into her apartment building. He knew the address of Yin's apartment and her hometown address as well. But why did he have this ominous feeling that this might be the last time he would see her? Finally, he pulled over for a moment, gazing at Yin's apartment building. It couldn't be true. It was just his overthinking. Yin would be perfectly fine, and he could visit her anytime. However, the heaviness in his chest persisted as he left behind the building, trying to push away the negative thoughts, and with a heavy heart, he resumed his journey, driving further away from the apartment.